Welcome to Outlier Detective. I'm Maria. Today with us, we have Jack Yang, an alumni of the Data Science Institute. He's going to share with us the transformative journey that he had from this university. Hi, Jack. Hi, Maria. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Maria, for inviting me as a guest and being back on Columbia campus, feeling student dynamics in person. It's always a pleasure to me. And uh, I joined Columbia program two years ago and I just recently graduated. And uh, during the two years, I had a wonderful experience in th during the two years, learned a lot, uh, the data science, and I'll be, I would love to use this podcast to share my journey to data science with everyone. That's amazing. Thanks, sir. Can you tell us a little bit more about what made you join Columbia and this program especially? Sure. So I've been working for financial industry for over two decades. And uh, before joining Columbia, you know, uh, indeed I'm having, I'm, my work is about dealing with data all the time. Mm -hmm. And I would say during my first 20 years when I'm dealing with data, it's um, always a very traditional way to deal with data. I even financial mathematics. And it's a, it's a very good way to handle data. However, that's a limitation about the way doing. Using the data science jargon which I applied from Columbia, I would say the old ways I'm using it more like symbolic learning ways. Uh, we set up a lot of rules, those rules get trained from the college. But once I, for the, during the 20 years, in the first 10 years, I think everything works pretty well because we don't have a lot of explosion data and uh, we can use the existing framework to hedge and everything works fine. But then for the last 10 years, we are always facing by the trading, by the management, say, I give you more data, can you hand us more data? And uh, usually the most bad, unfortunately, for the data approach I'm in the past, the more become unhandling. So I try to say, okay, maybe it's the way to form me to the other approach to learn the data, maybe such a product like neural networks. That indeed triggered me to learn data science in a more modernized level. And uh, that's how I choose in Columbia Data Science Program. And I'm grateful to have uh, this opportunity to join the data science program <laughs> and to learn the data science. That's amazing, thank you. Uh, but we would like to know, and the audience would like to know, a little bit more about how the education of Columbia helped you get into the industry. Sure. Uh, I would say it's, uh, in general, I before I joined the um, Columbia program, and I indeed also do lots of reading myself. Okay. And uh, But I feel like a self-reading, at least in my case, I feel that self-reading is not, is not a very viable approach to learn the data science. And because it does not give me a systematic way to learn the, to understand the data science in, as a whole. And uh, in those days, my experience would be I, when I come across a methodology from my buddies and my friend, and I often try to overuse this kind of methodology. And when I read the books, I just read a chapter linked to this methodology. And uh, it's very biased reading. But getting to a Columbia program, I will say it's a, it will give you more a very systematic training and uh, get you in touch with all modern tech, the most, not all, at least most modern technology device. And the most importantly, it will tell you each methodology, what's a weakness, what's a strength. And uh, so I think that's a very viable education you will acquire. And I would say before join, when I, if I have a data problem, my search for solutions very localized the search by, by iterating three, four methods I know, but with training the Columbia, I feel like I, I more have a global view because you know so many, because school teach you so many different aspects of methodology wise, so you have a global view and it will help me to find a solution more quickly and proficiently. So yes. that's... I completely agree. Yeah. I, I side by you with that. That's great. In a general aspect, you know, data science is a rapidly evolving field. Sure. How do you stay up to date with the latest trends by not just the education here or not just the work, but just your perspective? <laughs> I, I think the buzzword is called lifelong learner and uh, it's a, yes, you're absolutely right. I would say the data science wise, there is a, the nascent technology, the theory happen continuously. Yes. And uh, right now after good education in Columbia, I do have a good starting point. It will give me a more like complete view, I would say very global view of all the methodology available. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, this kind of, so you can see right now, I'm sitting in the mountain pretty high, I can see lots of terrain better. But unfortunately, I think it's uh, with this kind of technology, the terrain change, like the earth's surface change as well. 
and the rent of be getting high, but after several, just several years, it can be, you know, there's another mountain in front of you. And so I have a good starting point from Columbia, and I think a lifelong learner, just mm -hmm. keep learning, keep doing, learning every single day, and then, you know, keep yourself kind of taught, taught a space, and so you can serve every single thing. That's the, that's really the key to be successful. It's amazing. Uh, how would you handle situations where data analytics doesn't provide clear answers or unexpected results? I would say lots of big discovery is come from unexpected results. So, yeah. uh, but I would say it's the most important part to training here. It's allow me at least to analyze the unexpected result in a systematic way. Mm -hmm. right? So, you in general the results can come from three different ways. Maybe. The common sense is wrong, so the data will tell you two things. So just respect data. But before you reach that conclusion, you should really analyze the data. It's A as a it's our color graph, right? We think A cost B, so therefore we run the study. But maybe our color inference is not kind of correct. That's then one. Our theory can be wrong. Two can be the data is wrong. But I think lots of uh, data science person, uh, scientists may ignore this part. I think more just more practical person when you practice it. Lots of expert here, <laughs> but so in practice, I think people can't ignore this part because. But we know data about good even, and uh, you know the data we create can be sampling wrong, environment can be changing, can be can have some special treatments. So I think it's so the three steps. Again, I would say they say three steps systematic, like understanding that's also quite a knowledge from here. It's very the first one just say check the data, make sure the data you collected is what you expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not your job, it will take some time. And then, once you understand the data is what you expected, though there's no bias, then just revise your theory to see your theory is correct. Mm -hmm. And then, in the end, if you believe your theory is right and your data is right, then stick with your opinion because we have to stick with the truth. And uh, when we do a finance, when we give a tree suggestion or reduce the risk, we have to face the fact. You must know, have the fact, the fact can against what we think at the beginning. That was some great advice and great information, thank you. In terms of uh, your coursework and projects at Columbia, could you uh, share with the audience a little bit of your favorite projects or favorite research you have? <laughs> I think every single project in Columbia is very interesting. And uh, I kind of, I, I would say the project is the best way for you to connect what you learn in school and to some real world problems. Among other projects, maybe the one impressed me most, or have given me the most memory, is the Cancer Research Project. Yeah. Yes, and uh, during the, the Cancer Research Project, it not only allowed me to understand, you know, the data science, it can be applied for the medical study, mm -hmm. which is, you know, which is mind-blowing for, for me, okay. and uh, but also it showed me how the causal inference can be applied for the, the, with the data science to solve a real problem. Okay. And uh, so, therefore, this, uh, this evaluable experience Apply the call the inference for the cancer drug identification to identify and that help to diagnose person's cancer now. And uh, this is very uh, helping also to my real work right now when I'm doing the financial industry. Mm -hmm. In the end, you know, identify a drug to cure cancer versus uh, finding a you know find a hedge to solve the financial crisis. Yeah, same thing. Yes. In computer eyes, they all just some cancer numbers. Computer doesn't know it's cancer or it's a uh, it's a financial crisis. Mm -hmm. So this kind of connection is very natural link, but it's also just tell you the project you're doing here can be somehow, you don't know in the future, from time to time can also be applied to the work you're doing in the future. Yes. So therefore, they all, it's very useful. Amazing. Okay, uh, what advice would you give to the students of Columbia? Um, I think we already covered this before. I think it's more like a lifelong Learner. Yes. And uh, when you are at school, you learning to keep up to date be easier. Partially just because class, you're taking classes, mm -hmm. you have uh, exams, and mm -hmm. you have projects, so you're forced to be up to date with topics. Right. And once you go to work, if you don't do research, then I think people can often be more dissatisfied with what, what they learn. Yes, you do acquire lots of good knowledge in Colombia. But if you stop learning, this kind of technology can be legacy, can yes. be gone, can be outdated. So lifelong learner is the advice I will give to a future students. Don't be satisfied with where you are. You are after Columbia a good starting points, but keep the pace, keep learning to be ahead of the game. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Jack. You're welcome.
So that is Jack Yang with your host Maria. See you again. Bye. Bye.